What do you see in your mind's eye? Trust your first impression. Hmm. The wings. Mm. The I'm. I'm. Fe- Describe this for me. The more you talk, the more you'll see. So I'm flying mm-hmm. with these wings. What do the wings look like? Where? They're kind of uh, like colors. Mm. First I thought they were brown, but now they're colors Mm -hmm. in the... um, As I look like a bird. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. What does your body look like? Like a bird. Mm-hmm. It's I can't understand it. Mm-hmm. What's it made out of? Well, it's feathers too, but they're real small on the body, mm-hmm. like real tiny, tight. Mm-hmm. But the f- wings are feathers bigger mm-hmm. can feel the air in them and then oh. what color are these feathers on your body bluish 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 white but they um that's it they mm-hmm. they're they shimmer mm-hmm what about your face? Oh, God. What is your face like? It's... My mind wanted to put a beak mm-hmm. because it's thinking of a bird, but there's no beak. Mm-hmm. It's, um... Trust your first impression. Eyes. Big eyes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like uh, ears that are pointy. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't know that I even see a mouth. I don't. Mm-hmm. And as you're flying, do you feel that you have a gender? Are you male or female? Is there any separation in gender? No. No. Very good. So let's see where you're flying off to today. I'd like for you to change your focus to see where you are. What is this place that you're flying in? Um, I, oh, I just keep looking at the wings, so mm-hmm. because if, um, okay. The more you talk, the more it will come. I'm feeling the air, mm-hmm. the, 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 the movement of the flying with the resistance of the mm-hmm. environment. Mm-hmm. There is uh, oh, something going on mm-hmm. below. Connect with your emotions. What do you feel about this? Mm-hmm. 
What's happening? Um, it feels the pain of what's going on below. Mm-hmm. It's um, a lot of destruction. Tell me what kind of destruction do you see? Things are blowing up. Mm-hmm. And I don't. Um. It's life is being destroyed. Don't understand. Let's find out who's destroying this. Mm. Look and see where it's coming from. Who's destroying this life? I don't know. Um. Beings that have been um, blighted by power, not understanding the collective, mm-hmm. and becoming consumed by individual power. Mm-hmm. So this place that you're looking at, what is this place? Is this a planet? I'm hearing Earth. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to connect with the time frame and the timeline of this Earth. I'm going to tap your third eye and connect and see the number of the year on Earth. See the number appear. What Earth year is this? I'm hearing, not seeing. I'm all right. One, 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 but I don't understand. Mm-hmm. That's okay. One, one, one. So let's take a look closer. I'd like for you to rewind and go back in time before the bombing, before the destruction of this place. I'd like for you to see it before the destruction. Be there now. What do you see? It is a... Doesn't look like the earth. Mm-hmm. It's... What does it look like? It looks like a lot shimmery. Mm-hmm. Shimmery? Shimmery. Mm-hmm. Um, it's... The cities, if that's mm. what you mm-hmm. want to call them, yes. are they're infused with they're infused with energy, with light, with the um, power of the. that dimension that mm-hmm. I was seeing very dulled early in this life, mm-hmm. but that life, it's... I 
very big um, monolithic type of buildings, mm -hmm. but there are additions to them that are made of the energy. Mm -hmm. So there are and the stones shimmer mm -hmm. too. It's like layering. Beautiful. So let's find out a little bit more about this place. I'd like for you to zoom in closer. Are you an inhabitant of this place? Do you live there? Or are you just there watching? Uh, was. Mm hmm. I was. Tell me about that. I left. I chose to leave. When it began to turn. Tell me about that. What happened? <laughs> they wouldn't listen. <sighs> what was your role on this planet? You say they wouldn't listen. Did you know something? We were creating love and beauty. Mm -hmm. Were those the buildings? Uh, what kind of love and beauty were you creating? Uh, it was like other mentions worlds within worlds mm -hmm. that we understood, we created through thought. Mm -hmm. We took great responsibility in our thought. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Were you creating in many different dimensions this beauty? Uh, yes, mm -hmm. it was through the essences we understood. We made our way through the the say levels, but it's a different way of the layers mm -hmm. from thought to wind to water to stone to plant to So you use your thoughts to create this? These levels of thought? Yes, mm -hmm. from heart, from, from heart. heart, from heart. Heart had to be integrated. Mm -hmm. It is the only it is the way to keep it all connected so that it is 
not power over, power under. Mm -hmm. And was there a collective that was doing this, or just you? Collective? Mm -hmm. Did all this collective look like you? The look is, is, uh, it is uh, fluid. Okay. It is uh, changing. Mm -hmm. So you created yourself with wings? To come here. Okay. Today. Okay. Too. Very good. So tell me more about this place. Describe it for me and what is important about seeing this place today. Tell me about this destruction. Mm, there are many of us here mm -hmm. uh, today. There are many of us here today. We are our heart. Our heart is our source of power. Uh, tell me about why you're here today. What do you need to tell us? We were shattered. We're sh we were shattered mm -hmm. in the We were shattered in the explosions and we have taken many lives to recollect ourselves. Mm -hmm. <sighs> when you have taken these bodies, are these human bodies? It varies. Mm -hmm. Yes, sometimes we do. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to tell me more about this destruction. This destruction that was seen, where your lives were shattered. Was that here on planet Earth? Yes. Yeah. Was this done in the present time that we know is now? Yeah. Or was it done in the past? All now. All now. So where does this take place? Was this a different dimension? Uh, it is all different dimensions. It is overlaying. Time construct comes. Mm -hmm through to show us when we are ready. Mm -hmm. Now, in the lifetime of the body, Melinda, mm -hmm. was this destruction, did it take place during her lifetime or before? Oh, you would say We would say before. Before. Mm -hmm. Now you give us a number of 111. Can you tell me what that means, that number 111? Was that an earth year? No. What was that? It's a representation of layers that can become intersected to click. I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. So 
I'd like to be able to help you today to find out more about what happened to your place, what happened to this dimension that was bombed. It wasn't bombed, it was exploded from in. It was not bombed like we understand bomb. Mm. It was exploded in a... Mm, let me see. Pick. Oh, wait. Chris, I say crystal, but not crystal like we understand it. Mm -hmm. It was a... Mm, I can feel it, and I can hear it, and I can... Mm, it was a, a separate individuals who were using their knowledge of uh, the essences mm -hmm. and we call them crystals and essences to control and create from ego from separate wanting desires to create things that will do their will and it was extremely destructive it was so painful those of us who did not want this mm -hmm. now what happened to the planet when this happened Oh, mass destruction, it is the source of all the stories we hear about the floods and the destructions in all of the, all of the stories in all of the lands that we here today the echoes are. So when we hear about, for example, the destruction of Atlantis, was that part of it? Lemuria? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lemuria is different than Atlantis. Mm -hmm. Where were you? Lemuria Such beautiful beings mm -hmm. Tell me more Oh Creators of essences in the collective of the stone and the plant and the water and the flower and the air. Had to go underground. Mm -hmm. Part of the agreement So those from Lemuria are underground He had to move mm -hmm. It was a invasion of sorts mm -hmm not physical in the way we understand physical it was through don't know how did they infiltrate it uh, 
dimension mm -hmm. we were above and then we had to go below because of the violent nature of the infiltration. Mm -hmm. Was this a group that was infiltrating Earth? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Where did they come from? It is so mm -hmm. hard to see. Yeah. My hands are on fire right now. Mm -hmm. um, it is a uh, Very, very power over, very power over, power under belief system, mm -hmm. but it has abilities, mm -hmm. abilities in the uh, higher dimensional construct. Why would these that have such higher abilities, why would they, what would they want with Earth? The creative forces, the beings, not just the beings of what we call human, it is deeper than that. It is the the essences. Let me see how that is connected. It is. There is a how does that work? It looks like I see earth, but then I see rays coming out of earth and mm -hmm. there are what are in those? Okay. All these rays coming out of the earth and there are vibrations and knowledge in the rays mm. are databases in realities within the rays each has a different reality mm. of what how do I understand what, how does that, it is like a... What is creating all that information coming out of Earth? Are they individuals? We are a collective. Mm -hmm. And it is interfaced of inter collectives. Oh, I get hosh posh, but it's... Mm -hmm. See if you can go deeper into what one of these rays would be coming from. Where is one of these rays coming from that's coming out of the earth? Where is this database coming Oh. We have a center in our planet that is not understood. We have a center in our planet that is not understood. Where is the center? It is.
I'm trying to understand. I'm trying. Mm -hmm. That is the connection to the heart mm -hmm. chakra. Mm -hmm. Is this the heart uh, chakra of the earth? Or of each individual? Let's find out. Both. Mm -hmm. Both. It is both. And it is connected in the earth and on to our own heart here into this body that we have agreed to create here that we call human mm -hmm. and it is also connected to it goes out oh where does it go that is the race mm -hmm. that is the race so as the heart chakra of earth is connected to the human chakra that information is being sent out into the universe in a way? Is that it? Ah, uh, but it is all not just we do not see the universe as if it is a separate construct mm. because it is all interconnected and that is the lesson. Mm. Tell me more about that lesson. What do we need to know about that today? Oh, those who think we are separate and they grovel for their jobs and their companies, like this one called Melinda had to face, mm -hmm. are so lost. But it is not judgment, it is not judgment, no. Her anger was her ego dying to her idea of a position. The connections to universe, it appears that it is separate and it is outside of us, but it is not. It is from center of earth to heart of human to ray of light out of earth to other planets and other universes where parts of our separate beings are experiencing realities in what we call quantum reality. The New Age says, oh, it is all at once and we are all one, but that is a baby's view, a child's view that wants to connect ego to saying, oh, yes, we are all one, but yet ego is still running the show. Mm -hmm. So we must live and breathe every single breath with this understanding that we are in the process of bringing this heart, this heart, into the human body connected to the core of the earth and also connected to the cores of the other realities of our being we call multi-dimensional mm -hmm. yeah how do we learn to do that can you help me here today explain how we connect. We must let go of the fear that we all carry, we all carry of survival, 
connected to what we say is monetary reality we call money it is mm -hmm. it is yes we do have to use it but we do not we 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 need to wake up to the illusion of it Yes, we use it right now because it, it is part of the system that is dying out. But we do, we do use it. We must use it without the emotional connection, without the egotistical connection, without the, the idea, the idea that it is a reflection of our worth, mm -hmm. our sense of self, our being. Mm -hmm. That is the next step. Mm -hmm. She understands this. Now, her coming into this life was a little different than most. She came in not being able to see mm. like normal humans what was going on with her can you explain what she was seeing she was seeing she was seeing the dimensional realities of energetic systems and the thoughts behind those systems Ooh, she was seeing the bigger picture and the individual picture of what we say are humans. Mm -hmm. But it is really not an individual picture. She chose that because her system that she chose to be born into was so deep and dark in the she wants to be careful how she words this so as not to offend mm -hmm. the system she was born into was a very orthodox uh, system of a religious belief she chose to be born into that two parents who were very heavy into that system the line the family line not as a judgment but because there were also biological advantages what kind of biological advantages are you talking about as her body could take the electrical impulses just as this body lays here and is flooded and does not burn up mm -hmm. it was the lineages and the the oh the lineages of the females mm -hmm. many many <gasps> so many generations of females who accepted subservience but they accepted subservience from heart based and that is where the uh, I see it was an agreement it was a long agreement to allow the male energy that did come in through that system I spoke of earlier mm -hmm. that was interdimensional and power over, power under, it accessed the male, we call male energy of the system of the body and it decided to become dominant. Mm -hmm. Uh, what we call Melinda chose to come into this body system due to the beauty and she is to express massive, massive 
what is the word massive what is the word because it needs to be correct oh the heart feels it the heart feels it the woman the female the energy that said we will give up ourselves this aspect of the human it is half of the human because human is both it is masculine and it is feminine the feminine made the decision to to allow the masculine the power over there was the integration yes of the fourth dimension fifth dimension of these beings but it is a part of evolution we must understand mm -hmm. it is a part of the evolution it is not a them are bad or evil or destructive. It is a part of creation. The power of creation itself gives free will. We must understand and respect that. And the female did. Mm -hmm. And she said, we will allow. Did she also allow all of those relationships in her life? Did she, she agree to those? As a collective, agreed to allow the masculine his muscle. And the heart is the feminine this entity we identify as Melinda chose to come in this family line where the heart had remained viable mm -hmm. and the feminine and the nervous system stayed connected. It, it was a line, a lineage that appeared to be weak because the females were subservient. Nothing could be further from the truth. These women are and I say are because they are not dead. Mm -hmm. they live through, they live through the biological systems being born through this family line. Mm -hmm. It is why, and this is the answer to her question of why are there families where there are children born as empaths as she has been, and there are children born as the, we don't want to say narcissistic personality disorder as she has been trained in this particular lifetime. We want to say, well, let's be very careful. The heart needs to be connected in this identification. She is allowing the energy into the heart to make this identification. We will see where there is the polarity of the heart-based impact being and the opposite side of the spectrum of the don't use words that incite the 
the being who has identified their selves in many realities, not just the earth, many dimensional realities as separate. Mm -hmm. This is how we wish to state it. Mm -hmm. The consciousness that has gone down the path of separateness. Mm -hmm. And so the heart is not connected. And when they are born into this reality, they create a body with their conscious mind that is highly sophisticated in its ability to discern its environment from the position of from the position of how can my external environment serve me? Mm. Mm. And so the nervous system is it can be in the case that we call a sociopath Yes. Narcissistic personality disorder, the nervous system is highly developed in its ability to read its environment, but not from the heart. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be a differentiation in terms of the understanding, and that is what she has been pulled towards. There is a movement called the Goddess Movement. It is it is infiltrated with the anger. It is infiltrated with the anger. No judgment as I speak of this infiltration. It is an anger. It is an energy. And it is, we are being asked at this time, we are being asked, those of us in the female body, we are being asked to access this anger, yes, access it, but take responsibility for it. Do not use it to spew what is uh, still a power over power under vibration into this reality. We have all agreed to come into what we have agreed to come into at this present time. No matter how oppressive the coming into may be. And this is going to be very difficult for many to hear because, because of the pain of the pain body. The work of what is this? Toll, toll, Eckert Toll, the work of Eckert Toll on the pain body is very useful for those who are consumed by it. This one known as Melinda was consumed by pain body for a very long time. She understands the anger. She can speak to it. And she chose to come into this so she could because her ability to speak through the multi-dimensional universe is quite strong. Mm -hmm. Does she do this speaking through the multi-dimensional through Does she do it naturally? Or does she have to meditate to connect with it? What does she yeah, do with it? She doesn't meditate. She mm -hmm. just can walk down the street. And, and connect. Mm. Mm. It is now she is receiving the understanding of why she has had so many taken adverse mm -hmm. response to her and feel a jealousy. Mm -hmm. 
and in her youth she did not understand and it was part of oh what is that called the black heart program Mm -hmm. she was pulled into at every angle through mother source can you tell me what that black heart project is all about It is a program that has been brought in through the higher dimensional being uh, infiltration that she saw Mm -hmm. in the beginning of this session. It is a program that is quite sophisticated in its application. It will use the human beings surrounding the, in, I do not want to say entity because there is a negative connotation with that word, especially in this work yes. on this time mm-hmm. space. The Black Heart program has, oh, let me look at that. I am safe. I can look at that. It is, it is mechanical in nature, but not the mechanics as we understand Mm -hmm. mechanical in metal or uh, surface uh, things. It is a program that is mechanical in its nature through the fourth and fifth dimensional realities. Mm-hmm. It is where creation and the knowledge within those vibrational realities are used through again the thought process if the human beings only understood the power of the thought process we would turn everything off of that accessed it and manipulated it and infiltrated it what are the things that are being used to manipulate are we talking about the media things like that oh yes that is the simple ones mm-hmm can that you? is the simple one. So turning off the TV? Oh, yes. Not she, watching movies? Sh- movies, not necessarily movies. There is a vibration that comes through the television, mm-hmm. especially in what we call cable. It is not for the benefit of mankind. Mm-hmm. It is not. It is be. It is being used, and she knows this. She has done what she can in her home for years now. Mm-hmm. Uh, she has strong children who desire some of that infiltration, and maybe that is their role. That is their walk. Mm-hmm. She cannot control it all, and she is not a controlling parent, which is good. The forces that come through, sometimes there are movies that are created that have messages in them that are good. They are being, the, 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 the information is being tapped mm-hmm. by the creators, the directors, the writers. They are tapping into this information that is trying to give them more information. The problem we have at this moment in time is such an infiltration of information that it has become 
Oh, what is the word she wishes to access? It is a soup. Mm -hmm. It is a... It is a massive... Why does she get the word matrix? Because it may help others to understand. Mm -hmm. But it is, it is not a them versus us. That is the, that is the responsibility. That is what we have agreed to come into this reality to understand. It is not a them versus us. Are they a catalyst? What does that mean? Something that pushes you into a different direction. Something that moves you into a different direction. Are these movies? Thank you, Alba. Is that what it is? Yes, Alba. Like a contrast? It is a catalyst. We call it the precipice, mm -hmm. if you will. Okay. Catalyst can bring changes, yes. But we are at what we call precipice. All you need to do is look at our water on earth. Mm -hmm. Look at our consuming downward spiral where everything of one's self-esteem is wrapped up in that vibrational tone to see and understand that we are at a precipice mm -hmm. nothing to be afraid of do not let these words bring about any fear that is extremely important what are we heading into what is our path are we creating that yes we are mm -hmm. Melinda is beginning to understand that it has taken her going all the way through down to the bottom of the rabbit hole mm -hmm. and back up to be able to speak today. Mm -hmm. So all of the experiences that she's had give her a bigger picture? Yes. Mm -hmm. She... She has walked by faith for eons mm -hmm. to prepare for this time as many others have. Do not, she does not take this as a special position. Mm -hmm. No, 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 that would be, uh, would that be an ego thing? It would be a waste mm. of time. Okay. But she has a question about those people who are not feeling, who are not empaths. How do you get through to them? Why would they choose this time on Earth? Mm-hmm. This is very interesting. Are they just fillers? No. Do not take a superior stance, mm. Alpha. They are just as much a viable aspect of creation that are those who have taken the path of heart. Mm. It is the polarity. It is the part of an evolutionary process. Those who are of heart, who are 
even though it has created such a fragmentation mm -hmm. that this being, this body only feels in a minute stance because if she were to feel it in the way that she felt it in the aspect of her consciousness that was above the destruction that she spoke of earlier mm -hmm. today, it would fry the nervous system of this body and mm -hmm. she does not have a desire to do that. Mm -hmm. That would be self-destructive, it would not be loving. Mm -hmm. So when she looks at the beings of the polarity stance, the non-empath is a accurate word that can be used at this moment. She may evolve to be able to create something that is more she gets the word succulent. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. This maybe to bring a sense of. Um, she says the word juiciness, but she means that from a uh, position of energy mm -hmm. uh, force to say that it is a part of creation. It is a part of evolution. So when it's seen from that aspect, from the heart, one can hold compassion for the non-empath mm -hmm. at the same time as Melinda has learned in this life through almost losing this life by allowing a non-empath access to her body and her being at a level that almost destroyed it from multiple sources. She now can hold compassion for that being without allowing it in. Mm -hmm. And that is a big I don't know if I want to use the word lesson or if I want to say it is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. It is an opportunity for many who have chosen to come into this realm, into this timeline, into this bodies that we call human, but many are not a hundred percent human, as we would say. Mm. They have many things that have been brought in, consciously, some unconsciously. Is that what Melinda and I were speaking about before? Oh. Will you please? About people not being totally human on this planet. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That is going to be the. That is one of the biggest deprogramming aspects that we are moving into. Mm. And it is going to be okay. It is where many who have been programmed in the religious persuasions are going to have difficulty with because those types of programmings are extremely finite in their ability to see themselves. Very finite in seeing the human being as a human being having only one lifetime in this earth and the earth being the only reality that is real. So that will cause a lot of confusion when it becomes apparent that we do have interdimensional realities all infused in what we call earth plane. Now she has been able to see 
in people, other beings. Yes. Can you tell her about this? What is she seeing? Oh, she is so beautiful in her ability to see when she removes the programs, but she still fights them. She is seeing interdimensionally. She is seeing the multiple aspects of the human being that we say are human. She does see the human body, but she is also accessing the other multidimensional fractal aspects of that being that are not just human. Hmm. Sometimes they are human in other timelines. She has seen those, but she has and not but. Let her make that correction. She is also seeing various interdimensional aspects of their beings. It is quite normal and natural. She, after today, will no longer fight it. And she does not have to concern herself with, oh, is she going to go crazy? Because that is the fear she has had. Mm. And it is the fear that many have. Many are seeing. They are getting the glimpses. They are getting the... How do I word this? They are getting the dropping of the veils. That is a common phrase. Yes. Yes. So they get a second or two of the dropping of the veil. They think they have seen something. The mind comes in and says, no, you, that is ridiculous. You have not seen that. And then they go back on their way, but it sits inside and it nags and they don't speak to anyone. They sit in there and they lie in their beds at night and wonder if they're losing their effing minds. And she says that to be funny. Mm -hmm. They are not losing their minds. They are acting actually gaining aspects of their beings back, their abilities back, because the human being has been designed to see in this way. That is part of what has been, mm, what is the word? There has been a manipulation of the bodies. Mm -hmm. And so through some of those manipulations, there have been things that have been, I don't know if I want to say taken away, because it is understanding that originally maybe it was not done to take away originally it was done out of curiosity like our scientists are doing where they are doing gene splicing and things like that with animals. Maybe it is not up in the forefront at this time, but it is and has been done. It is not much different than that. Here is where, here is where we need to understand in terms of quantum physics is that when we are in aspects of ourselves that may be what we call future, we could sometimes be possible for things that may have done been done in past. It may be part of why we are born into certain systems, certain families, certain bodies as well. 
Now, is it possible, since we started this session out, that things are created by thought? Can we manipulate our own bodies oh, yes. to open up that vision, to drop that veil faster? Yes, but one must be careful, Miss Alpha. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about that? One must be careful in opening up the interdimensional eyes as she has done. She refers these two as the ancient eyes. One must be careful because if the programming within the present brain system of the body is deeply embedded in the systems of the beliefs of limitation, because the limitations, you have no idea how deeply they are embedded. Mm -hmm. So if one says, yes, I want to open up my ancient eyes and I want to see these multidimensional realities that Melinda is speaking of, and it is an ego-based desire, mm -hmm to feed the ego one it will be said that one is playing with fire mm -hmm. be careful of that fire that you are allowing within to your nervous system because you may allow that in your thought process and say yes i do wish to see in this way and you open up that channel and the fire is too intense for the programmings. The programmings are mechanistic in nature. Mm -hmm. There is a mechanism there. There is a mechanism there. It isn't... Hmm, it is fourth and fifth dimensional mechanism and it will fry the the ah, nervous system within the human body if the programming is still within a third dimensional mechanism and has not accelerated to an understanding of say fourth through thought process and consciousness just in regular thought while walking down the street you see, mm -hmm. there needs to be that vibrational understanding, that heart she feels as she speaks, that heart mm -hmm. vibrational understanding that does not judge as she walks down the street. Mm -hmm. Many do not understand that they are judging non-stop as they walk down the street, it isn't even conscious. Mm -hmm. They may look at someone and be judging the hair or the clothing, possibly even just the way they are simply walking. Mm -hmm. It is a, it is a very high shift in awareness. And the ego does not run that show. Mm -hmm. It does not run that show. The reason I ask that is because most of the people who come to see me want their third eye open. And I wanted to get a good explanation as to why most people do not have their third eye open. Their I... ancient eyes. Yes, it is a uh, dangerous game. Mm -hmm. And if one is attempting to open that eye, they really need to take a long sit down in a dark room and ask themselves why. Good. When we can learn how to hold compassion for our humanness first. That is the doorway. If anyone is curious about third eye opening, drop the ego, go into your heart, look into all of your shadow 
We all have so much we are transmuting on a collective level. At first it will feel individual. It will feel individual. The ego will want to come in and chastise the living crap out of you because that is the purpose of the ego for its survival. But we are entering into a new paradigm in humanity. The ego is not as necessary as it was. Compassion is the key as we hold ourselves accountable for that which is in us that we don't like so much. Mm -hmm. And the ego does come in we will learn how to hold compassion for that as well. And that is the doorway into third eye opening. It is an inside job. And as we learn how to hold compassion for ourselves, because this one has done the work, then we can hold the compassion for our fellow human beings, especially those who we are presently have spoken of as non-empath. Mm -hmm. But we hold it knowing that the non-empath needs to walk their path without our heart-based when it isn't clear what our mission is. Mm -hmm. And we get pulled into things that are not ours to carry. But that is the purpose of the non-empath for the empath. And if you see it from that perspective, it is a most beautiful dance. Mm -hmm. It is a most beautiful dance when you can see it for what it is. They give us the ability to recognize our own individuality within a construct that is collective while still holding the heart from a collective space. Mm -hmm. Now it seems that she still has some work to do with those in her life. Yes. Would you give her some advice on those that are still trying to hurt her? When she feels the tightness in her chest, the trigger that causes the constrict, it is a visceral constrict. It is as simple as taking a deep breath as the mechanism to reprogram the trigger point. The trigger point is, how do we say, justifiable because it is a program that she has chosen and has lived through. So when she feels that in the people surrounding her, say to herself, Melinda, it is okay. It is a trigger based on a previous trauma. It is a viable one, but one that she no longer wishes to carry as a viable trigger. Simply see in her breath as she inhales deeply and then exhales deeply that she is consciously changing the thought process behind the programming and saying, I am no longer going to be triggered by this environmental action. Very good. Thank you for that. I think that's something that we all need to know. Yes. We all have triggers that hurt. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And in talking about that, 
Do we choose these people that are going to be in our lives that trigger so much pain and opportunity for growth? We wish to hesitate before we say the yes because we understand that the yes will incite for many a trigger in itself Mm -hmm. because their belief in being a victim to their circumstances is so strong. And while we say this, the heart speaks and says, we do understand your pain. We feel your pain. We do know that it is very difficult to see beyond it. We simply ask if you will consider the possibility that you did indeed choose the reality that you did experience that was horrifically traumatizing to you as something that had an opportunity of learning within it. We just simply ask you to consider that as a possibility for a moment. And if you cannot, that is okay too. Just love yourself through as you make your way. We do understand the reality in material, in visceral human body is the ultimate of challenges. You are all so brave and so wonderful in your creation, whatever it is. Very good. Thank you. Melinda has told me that she had a craniosacral therapy session. And she, when she returned back into the body, it was difficult as the energy she was bringing into it from the recollected lifetime was immense. She had seizures. Can you tell her what was happening? This massive amount of energy. Yes, we will answer her. It was time for her to integrate that fragmentation. It was a primary aspect of a fragmentation that was directly impacting this particular lifetime. It was all chosen as it is. The timing was perfect even though she had no idea it was coming. The person who was facilitating the craniosacral was familiar with this type of integration, although Melinda was not aware of this. It was, as you say, Alba, divinely orchestrated, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as you experience in your work. Yes. The seizures were because the power of that particular lifetime was extreme. Mm. Therefore, the fragmentation upon death, because of the, this is important for Melinda to understand, that was the lifetime where her heart in human form became disillusioned to the point of complete separation in 
accessing the multidimensional realities. In that lifetime, she was accessing the multidimensional realities as her norm. Hmm. And it was the cause of the death of that lifetime because it was not accepted once the religious programming came through her we call it land but it was really a dimension so when that religious programming came through her dimension it caused those that had previously appreciated her abilities to turn all right good now she also tells me that she has had three spirits who appear together and visit her. They seem like they're monks. And she senses that there are her own soul experiences in different lifetimes. Could you explain what that yes. is? Who they are? Yes, she, she, she knows. She knows, she battles the language at times in her head. Mm -hmm that wants to dismiss what she knows and um, it is aspects of experiences she has chosen to take that um, come to her in her waking time to advise her as she has chosen in this lifetime to traverse many 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 dark types of realities mm -hmm. and so they come in and they have assisted her during periods where catalyst is coming in from a dark mm -hmm. space many people are doing this without realizing it how do we she access, just sees how do we access these aspects of ourselves from other lifetimes. How does that work? For others. Mm -hmm. How can I speak to the people of today? The people of today in the reality that we have today, it would be best to unplug. Unplug from the artificial forms of electric stimulations. Yes. If you wish to access the multi-dimensional parts of your being, learn to connect to the multiple, multiple dimensional aspects of Earth itself. One only has to walk through a forest mm -hmm. to understand the multi-dimensional aspects occurring in that sphere of living breathing beings. However, it is a, we are aware that there are those who do not have access. There are those who live in the cities within the cities. You should be able to at least find a park if you can because the natural world is a program. It is a system and it is still embedded in the creative aspects, in the creative essences. They, they are creating and they are answering to the sun. They are, if you ever notice a plant, it mm -hmm. leans to the sun. Yes. That is because the sun is a source of light, of data, of information. It is 
available to us if we use it. Not use it in the sense of selfishness, but just open ourselves as the flowers do, you see. Being, we call it being. Mm -hmm. Well, we live in a reality where being is not something that occurs naturally in the environment that we have created as a system. Go, go, do, do, learn these linear ways through our educational system, although that is going to be changing. Mm -hmm. It is changing, and many of the beings coming in are a part of that process as well. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Did they come in for that purpose, to change the educational system, the programming? We won't say sole purpose, maybe aspects, because mm -hmm. they are, they, they are, they've come in to do many things, mm. some many things, some just to be who they are, and some who may appear to be very, um, uh, <laughs> what is the word she was just to use, um, belligerent? Yes. Some of those that have come in that just can't seem to fit in the system yes. have chosen that because they want to break the system. Mm. And they are courageous in the way they have chosen to come in because they have chosen to come into bodies that cannot process these vibrational realities and clash severely with them. And they are, we see it on the outside looking in as suffering. And it appears, and it does look like suffering. But on a higher aspect, they have chosen this to force the changes mm -hmm. that are needed. Her gift is the word. Mm -hmm. Her gift is the ability to speak of her experiences from a place of empowerment today that was not a gift yesterday. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that we'll be working together more to bring out more of this word? Would this be a good idea? She hears yes. Mm -hmm. She feels from the Melinda perspective a little nervousness because she doesn't like being out. Mm -hmm. Is that part of the ego? Or the heart? It is a remnant of being destroyed for it in the past. Mm -hmm. Did she come here to work with that program? with that memory. Oh yes, absolutely to transform mm -hmm. because so many have come to transform that memory. Mm -hmm. There are so many who are being ran by feelings of fear of being true to who they are out of that old memory of massive destruction, yes. Mm -hmm. It is in the cells and the biology of many human beings. So being authentic scares a lot of people. Absolutely. How can we work through that? Is that the same thing, taking a breath and seeing what's triggering it? Would that work? Yes. Mm -hmm. That is the first step. That is the first step. And know that when your eyes do begin to change, at first they will soften. They will soften to yourself. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, they will soften to yourself and then the eyes will begin to return to their original design and they will see things and be patient and kind to yourself mm -hmm. through that process because undoing programmings of limitation can be frightening mm -hmm. and it can be it, it can uh, uh, create what she calls the chatterbox mind yes where the ego is going to come in and just start talking mm -hmm. and tell yourself very not nice things to yourself mm -hmm. recognize when the self-talk becomes uh harming yes in the sense of like what are you crazy or what's wrong with you or are you stupid or whatever however form it takes mm -hmm. know that you are actually on the right track and say oh okay that's just the programming i understand now that's just the programming it's okay you know i've chosen to come at this time to do this and I've chosen to be a participant of this deprogramming aspect and just go with that flow and see where it takes you. And, and if you can find others, mm -hmm. just as Melinda did today without them. So as we get together and show our authentic self to others, it will help. Yes. Very good. Yes. And be selective mm -hmm. in the beginning yes. so that you are not traumatized in the way that this one was. Mm -hmm. Use, use your body. Use your body as a, I'm going to say, tuning device. Yes. Listen to what your stomach is telling you. Listen to what your gut, what your heart, listen to what it's all telling you. As you imagine sharing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's going to be the return home. Very good. Thank you. We've gone through a lot of her questions. I'd like to ask you, how are you her higher self, a representative? Who is it that I'm speaking with today? She would say higher selves. Mm -hmm. Selves. That's what she would say, her higher selves. Like a collective. Yes. Mm -hmm. And as we evolve, we will begin to understand that more as a collective as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are so many aspects to ourselves that it is not comprehensible mm -hmm. in this particular reality. Mm -hmm. She hears the saying in my house, there are many mansions. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now I understand that Melinda did not want to be known, to have this expressed outside of the, this session. Is she, has she been chosen or did she choose herself to be a mouthpiece of this information? Oh, her feet are on fire. <laughs> Go ahead and calm her feet. Cool her feet off, please. She felt very nervous before coming. Mm -hmm. She felt that there would be a shift. She 
she is hearing the saying, you can run, but you cannot hide. She has a great gift. Are we to work together in the future? Yes. Mm-hmm. Anything else you would like to tell her? Are we complete? Thank you very much. Five. Completely awake. Feeling wonderful all over. Welcome back. I can't even feel my body down on the bottom part. Mm -hmm. Come back slowly. It's coming back. Feel it come back. Oh. <sighs> Ooh, a lot of information. I can't remember it. Some of, I'm remembering rays mm-hmm. coming out of the earth. Mm-hmm. That's all you remember. I remember. I remember the bird and then the, the explosions. Mm-hmm. And that's it. How long did it feel for you? How long did you feel that you were? This journey was thirty minutes. Mm-hmm. Is that your good guess? I mean, technically, feel it feels like thirty minutes. Okay, we're on two hours right now. Holy crap! Two hours. Mm-hmm. Two hours. Yeah, it's a lot of information. Wow. I'm remembering some of it now. Wow. I remember... Wow. That was different. Different than any other hypnosis you've had? I've only had that one I told you about that was... Right? And then the other stuff that was more of just kind of going back and healing the childhood stuff. Yeah, that's just hypnotherapy. Yeah. We uh, we had quite a conversation. Did we? Mm-hmm. It was a uh, kind of ever tell everybody information. I had a feeling that's what you were going to say. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. there's a lot of information out there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, we. It was wild. It was wild. Yeah. Okay. Just very very deep stuff. Very deep stuff. Talking about your empaths and um, all that stuff. Okay. But, you know, you have to listen to it, obviously. Right. You think it's going to, like, shock me? I don't know, maybe. No, it's not going to shock you. Not me, but maybe other people. They're going to be shocked into reality, you know? Oh. Yeah, I mean, especially we talked a lot about the third eye. We did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people come to me and say, I want to open up my third eye. Oh, I remember the warning. Mm -hmm. Just be be careful because you're, yeah, it it is. Mm -hmm. It's an energy. It's a vibration in the nervous system. I've always kind of known that. Mm -hmm. I had an experience when I was 18. I thought I'm going to do a prayer every night. So I did a prayer every night for about a month, mm-hmm. and then I woke up one at four zero zero, and I didn't have eye surgery yet where they had corrected them. So I'm like, why? How can I see the clock? Because normally I shouldn't have been able to, mm-hmm. but I saw it. And then I looked, and I could see through the ceiling, and I went through it. This is waking, mm-hmm. and I went through it, and then I was faced with source. The love was so massive, and I didn't want to go back, but I felt like this membrane yes. all around me that felt like as if you were pushing from the inside of the skin, yeah. 
and I felt it. And then source came back and said, if you were to experience me in, in its form, mm -hmm. it would burn your physical body completely up. The energy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? Cause I didn't understand that at <laughs> Anything, all. Yeah. Right. But then, and then I understood that I needed to, um, I just needed to, I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't ready, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I knew that. Right. So you've been sitting there for two hours. That's what I do. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Alpha. You did great. You did great. <laughs> that was amazing. Even though you don't remember. Yeah. So how do you feel? I feel a lot lighter, which is kind of, a, you know, like my yeah. body feels yeah. a lot lighter. What yeah. happened? Your body, you said it felt like it was on fire. It was, it was hot. Yeah, it was, I could feel the currents, like the current running through yeah. and the whole body like vibrating. Shame. And then it trying to come, it, it was like coming out of the hands and the yeah. feet because it was so yeah. much. Yeah. Because if you see that, it almost looks like you're cold. Oh, it wasn't like that. Okay. Right? Yeah. So what, tell everybody about this, this thing with your vision. You mean? How you came into this world. Oh, I didn't have um, eyesight mm -hmm. until I was 10. But the, yeah, and I didn't know I didn't have it, and neither did my family or teachers or anything, because I got good grades in school. So how did you get along in the world without eyesight? Um, I just <laughs> saw differently. Yeah, so what is, how did you see the world? I saw the world energetically, and everything intermixed. There was no solidity. So nothing was and solid. Nothing was solid. And so that's how did you what like, I thought was normal. So how did you like hold a pencil? Well, I would hold a pencil because I could, as soon as the paper would touch my nose, then I could read. Ah. So. Isn't that interesting? That's how, and then it was a, a, a random eye exam at school that caught that I was blind. Isn't that interesting? Mm hmm But I didn't know. I just thought the things I couldn't do that other kids could do well, like ball games and things. Mm -hmm. Um, I just thought they had the magic that I didn't have because to me the world was magic. Wow. You know, the way it all... It all worked. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So what happened to get your eyesight back? Well, they I just got a pair of glasses that were probably, you know, mm -hmm. that thick. And yes. Then I had to adapt to seeing... Solid. Solid, which was very... Isn't that traumatizing, amazing? actually? Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, it was at the time. That's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So, this is a, a gift that you have to be able to go and in, go into this trance and be able to connect. What did you feel that you were connected to? Do you get a sense of what it was? M me, my, yeah. m me, but not Melinda. Me. Yes. My um, consciousness what it is that I am mm -hmm. without this mm -hmm. body. Pretty being, powerful. It's, yeah. Pretty powerful. Very, very powerful. Yeah. You did fantastic. So what would you recommend to other people who are trying to do this type of work? Um, you know, go, go into a hypnosis session. What would you recommend for them? If they feel, if you feel pulled, mm -hmm. like it's pulling you, even if you don't know why. Yes and you feel that the person that you're feeling pulled towards is trustworthy, which I felt with you mm -hmm. right off, to go ahead. Go for it. Go for it and yeah. do it. Yeah. yeah, but it's all divine timing. And we yes, talked about this today. Um, even your higher self said that. It's, it's about divine, divine timing. You will go when it is your right time. It's not that you could push your way through it and it's gotta be done today. That's the ego mind telling you. It's when it's going to happen. So follow your gut. And Melinda, you and I have been trying to connect for a long, <laughs> yeah. long time. Yeah. That was like the original appointment that we had, like last year sometime, or even before then. Uh, it's, your name kept know. coming up on my yeah. calendar. I kept it having to erase turning her name and moving it to another time, and erasing it and moving it to another time. We're right now in Salt Lake City, mm -hmm. and uh, where are you from? 
I live in Missoula, Montana. Montana. Now. So uh-huh. we were. Tr- I was trying to figure out, can I get to Montana to see you? you know, because <laughs> her appointment just kept getting shifted, 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 shifted. And yeah. even the last time we got canceled, I had to cancel my appointment in Salt Lake. Just a few days before. Just a few days. But yeah. I had an illness in my family, and I had to get out of Dodge really fast. And um, we had to reschedule it again. So this was like the perfect timing. Mm-hmm. It must be the perfect place. Yeah. where the vibrations are, yeah. and we talked about that before, that you have some sort of a connection with this place. Mm-hmm. So when the stars align, that's when you get a session. So I hope you enjoyed this session. I certainly got a lot of it. I'm still shaking myself because I, I get the energy going through oh, me. Okay. But if you want a session with me, go to my website, albawyman.com. Click on the newsletter link. It's under hypnosis. Sign up for that newsletter, and it comes out approximately once a month. If I have any sessions open, I'll bring it out on the, you'll, you'll get a calendar, click on that calendar, and that's how you book an appointment with me. The sessions go really, really fast, so you have to be quick. So that's all we have for today. I hope you enjoyed this session. I sure did. Bye, until the next time. <laughs> Give me that hug. Mm. Thank you.